Welcome to Model 4, which is uh, dedicated to running in parallel, parallel computing, okay? So to run in parallel, there is no specific uh, programming, okay? It's just using the, the, the solvers and applications that runs in parallel, okay? So this is just an introduction how to run in parallel, okay? I'm not going into details about what is behind how to program, okay? And so far in previous tutorials, we have run into, in parallel, but we don't know what is specifically happening. So this is our goal, just to show you what is happening. So the first thing is that you need to know how many processors or cores are available in your computer, okay? This can be a cluster, your laptop, your desktop computer, or anything on the cloud, but you need to know how many cores are available. So. If you want to check that, you can use this command that comes with most Linux installation. If you don't have it, you will need to install that. Okay, it's not a problem just to show you. For instance, my computer, if I run LS CPU, here you have the description. So here I have four cores available. Okay, so that is the maximum number of cores that I can use to get something efficient okay to scale you can run with more cores even if you don't have it but you are not going to scale be careful so as you check that output of ls cpu you see that in insta you know, for instance in this case we are we're using a computer with tw uh, 24 cores okay but be careful also here you have 24 cpus you have traps and very important open phone is not threaded okay so traps is like those uh, virtual CPUs or hyper threading that is called sometimes. So you get you get 24 here because you have six cores per socket, okay, and two sockets or two motherboards, okay. So in total, give give you 12 cores, and then as you are using hyper threading goes to 24, but you cannot use hyper hyper threading. It's not hyper threader open phone, so you are not going to get any benefit. So always check this information, and you should get you should use this combination, okay, between cores and sockets, okay. You have here the explanation. So <clears throat> a little bit what well, say before. So be careful, okay, that open phone is not hyper threader. So why running in parallel, okay, or why using more cores? So basically here you have five reasons, okay. It's quite clear that you want to solve larger and more complex problems, provide concurrency, meaning that you can run many tasks at the same time or treating or multitasking, uh, save time because you have more cores that are going to run faster up to a limit, okay, be careful, save money, okay, because you are running faster, saving time, and time is money at the end of the day, and also you have limits in serial computing, okay, so you can run in serial, but you cannot go larger or faster, okay, so these are the main reasons that why we run to, why we want to run in parallel, okay? The most important being this one is scale out, larger pro problems and faster. So when you are running in parallel, you are going to get something like this, okay? So we have this curve and these are no no here, a strong scaling and weak, weak scaling, that is, and that's Lau and Gustafsson, Gustafsson Lau. So basically the end of Lau would say that <clears throat> is the one that when you increase, you fix the number you increase the number of cores and you see the speed up of your application, okay? Strong scaling. So see that in this specific case, as you keep increasing processor, it's running faster, but in one point you reach a limit that is not going to run faster. In this case, it's 12 cores, okay? So as you put here, you double the number of cores, you will see that it will, still, it will stay flat or it will go down. Why? Because now is the interprocessor com uh, information that is, is dominating the, the the case okay so this is something that you have to be careful okay not necessarily if you put one million processors it will run faster okay so this is the strong scaling and then you have the other scaling the weak scaling that you say that you do this initial benchmarking you find that at 12 cores uh, uh, <clears throat> the scaling is tall so you go here and what you do is increase the size of your problem so now you're increasing the size of the problem see that now you are speeding up okay so not necessarily when you reach 12 here the 12 this limit of 12 score it means that you cannot run faster so now you say okay i cannot use any more cores but what you can do is increase the size 
of the problem and likely it will scale. And then also you can start to scale the number of processes. So be careful also when running, don't, don't go any of the cases that we have done so far, they don't scale very well with more than four or six processes. So don't go and put there 128 processes because it will run faster. And these are things that you have to have, you need to have in mind. So the idea, when running in parallel, there are different ways to do it, okay? So we have the shared memory architectures, like in your computers, you can have two sockets or one single computer, all of them accessing the memory, okay? Or you can have distributed memory architecture. These are clusters on supercomputers, okay? So you put many of these configurations, everything in a higher speed network, okay? And this is what is important. The network is, is what, what you pay for when you are running in, in supercomputers, okay? You have something very efficient. And this is the difference, okay? So to run in parallel and open for it doesn't matter what system you have, we run in the same way, but ideally we would like to have something like this because we have more cores available. <clears throat> okay, so some facts about running open for in parallel. Uh, application, you don't need to do any parallel specific coding, okay? Everything already has been done for you, so do not worry about that. If you run in parallel, you will need to use an MPI library, okay? And usually it's come with, the, with your system, so if you follow the installation instructions that we're giving you, or also what is in the website, you use Open, open MPI, but there are many 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 versions okay different versions uh most of the applications and utilities run in parallel there are a few of them that doesn't run in parallel okay so there are some commands here in the slides so we'll show you how to find that but it's, but the important thing the solvers they do run in parallel okay if you write a new solver it will be in parallel okay or implement a new application okay will be in parallel most of the time okay uh we have been able to run in parallel up to 15,000 processors okay so basically there is no limitation okay you just need to, to find the the computer also it can run in gpus in single and multiple P gpus is something that is not officially supported but in the community there is some work done it's not easy but it's also possible but don't look in our direction okay we're not doing anything on this we have tested a few a few implementations but it, 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 it can run uh <clears throat> also this training, as we have seen so far, this is not about programming, okay? So we're not going into details about open phone programming, and also we're not going into details about MPI and GPO programming, okay? This is more about the using the applications in, in, <clears throat> in parallel. So to run open phone in parallel, what you need to do is on these three, the, you need to follow these three basic steps. They compose the domain, okay? You need to split the domain in different chunks that each processor will solve, okay? To do that, and probably we already, you have seen this already, this command that we use it in the in model one, the compose part. You decompose this domain and the number of, of processors that you have using this dictionary. Then you distribute the jobs among the processors or computing nodes using MPI. So also when we run, recall that we use MPI run, that is what we're doing okay that is done automatically and at the end and this step is optional you can put everything back together so you split here and then you put it together this is only for post processing okay but you can do it also in, in parallel this is optional compulsory are these two steps okay so let's see what happens first the decompose part dictionary file so here you have this keyword and here's where you put the number of subdomains which is equal to the number of cores that you want to use so in this case we're saying that we want to run with 128 cores okay and then the method there are many methods to do that decomposition we're going to see that later what it's about but our advice is always use this method this scotch okay it does a very good job so here you have the methods available okay so probably not listing all of them okay so some of them are manually you need to define that but our advice always stick with this one okay which is something equivalent to metis is you have heard about methods so the idea is this one so imagine that you have your mesh and you already define bundle conditions and everything in zero so you run the compose part okay and in this case, we're using four processors. So see that what it's doing, the compose parts and using a specific method, okay? So this is the output for one given method. Each method is going to give you different outputs. So what you are doing is processor one is going to uh, solve this part, two, this part, uh, and so on. And then 
you have this common interface, the Halo interface, where you have the interprocessor communication. Okay, so the idea of these methods that you have, and, even, and probably the Scotch and methods, and methods, that what they do is minimize this this common interface between uh, between processors. So you have all processors have roughly speaking the same the same communication. Okay, so that's what they are doing. If you are doing manually, likely you are not going to get that. Okay, so that's why it's recommended to use those methods that are automatically. So what you do is that you decompose, then after you decompose, you have everything there and you can run. To run, just go MPI run minus MP, the number of processors or subdomains that you define in the compose part, the dictionary, the name of the application or utility, and do not forget to put this keyword here, this flag minus parallel, okay? This is telling you that you are running in parallel. If you don't put this, it's going to run, but it's going to run in proc. So as you put here four, it's going to, to run four different jobs, okay? So you are going to slow down everything. So be careful, always put the minus parallel keyword there. So this is it, okay? As easy as this, okay? So whatever solver, all the solvers that you have an open from running in parallel, okay? So for now on, if you want to run to in parallel, have that this dictionary, the compose part dictionary, run this utility, and then MPI run minus MP, number of processors, and the utility, and minus parallel keyword. And at the end, for post-processing, okay, this is optional. What you do is put everything together using this, this application or utility called reconstruct part, okay? It will reconstruct everything and put it back together for post-processing, but this is optional, okay? So here you have in your command line, this will be your, your steps. The compose part, MPI run NP, run in parallel. Do not forget this, this keyword, and then this step is optional at the end. So just to show you, for instance, if you go in this directory, you are going to find this case. Okay, so we're using here uh, Interphone, it's another solo, so you know you know how to look for that information. And see, this is the classical node, the Kelvin health on stability, okay? But we're running this case in parallel, and the idea is this one. See that we get finer meshes, okay? And actually, I need, okay, these are, I need to update this slide, but these are doubling, okay? What we're doing here is doubling uh, sorry, we fix the mesh size and we are increasing the number of, of processors and see that one processor, two processors, and then we reach the time 12 processors and we are not accelerating. So we reach the strong scaling limit. And at this point, if you want to speed up, probably you can double here the number of cells. Okay, but this is the idea. More processors, you run faster. Okay, you get, you gain time. <clears throat> okay, so visualizing uh, parallel case. So the traditional way or the easy way that you want to do that one is just after you have the solution, you run reconstruct part and then parafone. Okay, and then you do your post processing in the standard way. But there is another option, and recall that I have, I have se since, since since the beginning that it's better to use parafone with this option built in. When you have this option, when you use this option, you are going to get access here in case type. You can visualize the reconstruct case, the case in serial, or the decompose case, the case in parallel, okay? So it's better to use this one. So when you use this auction, you just access the case in parallel, so you don't need to do this to follow this step, because this step requires reconstruction. You are doing computations, it's time consuming, and if you have large meshes, it can be very, very, very time consuming, okay? So my advice is leave the case in, C in parallel and use the auction parafone built-in, which by the way is much faster than the parafone. So there are differences in the, in the plugins. No, so parafone is just reading, is using some specific plugin for open phone, so it's a little bit slower. Okay. Uh, also, so for those that are curious that want to visualize that partitional, so here you, you have this method now. To visualize this is a manual method now you just enter into each folder and put the file but this is a little bit time consuming so you, you need to do that uh so one thing about decomposing uh big meshes okay so the utility decompose part does not run in parallel okay so paradoxically <laughs> it doesn't run in parallel the tool that you used to run in parallel you cannot run in parallel so it is not possible to distribute the mesh among different computing nodes to do the partition in parallel so you cannot do mpi run minus mp 128 decomposed part minus parallel it's not possible it runs only in serial so one thing is that if you are 
decomposing big meshes, you need to have enough memory in your computer because this tool will do everything with the local memory. So, and it does not do swapping. Okay, so for instance, if you have 100 million cells and your computer, you have six, 16 gigs of memory, it's, this utility is going to crash. It's not going to decompose. So this is a big limitation. So usually you need this, uh, <clears throat> you need to have a, a, fat, a fat computing node and no with, with, with enough memory. So roughly speaking, you know, the number of cells is proportional to the memory node. So for instance, you have 32 gigs of memory in your computer, you, you will be able to do the decompos uh, decomposition up to kind of 30 million of cells, okay? so. Be careful with this. Uh, Sen applies with reconstruct par. It does not run in serial and it has this, this limitation. There are a few other applications, utilities that do not run in, in parallel, okay? But do not be afraid, all the servers, they, they run in parallel. However, you need to have enough memory, okay? If you want to know, know all the solvers or utilities that do not run in parallel, you can type this command in, in the terminal and it will show you all the all the files okay so be careful uh type this one and you will see okay so you would realize that all solvers will run and a few applications it, it, they, they are not going to run uh also another application that do not run in uh, that that's not run in parallel is block mesh okay block mesh that's not that's not run in parallel and again for instance you want to do a mesh with 30 million cells you need to have at least 32 gigs of memory okay so be careful with this also parafilm by default does not run in parallel but you can compile it in parallel but i think it's not that important in serial it is okay but also when you compile well you need to to change these options okay okay so that's all for this case next we're going to move to to two exercises just to show you how to run in parallel again to reinforce this idea and also to show you how to visualize this decomposition okay so as usual here you have some exercises so feel free just to to get an answer to try to answer this one and then we can discuss this during the q a session so that's all for the theory thank you very much for your attention see you in the next videos where i'm going to show you some practical aspects of running empire thank you and bye